So, hello everyone, I'm Bora and I'm back with another physics problem for you. So, um, this problem is in chapter 7, problem 37, um, in your physics, university physics book by Yang and Friedman. So, um, in this problem we, have give, we are given a setup which has a bucket of concrete, a box and a gravel on top of the box. So, um, we, you see the you know, um, data I have, given, I have written on the board for this given setup. So, in option A, uh, before starting the question, um, in option A, we, have, we need to find the force of friction force between both the gravel and box and box and the roof. Okay? So, this friction and this friction force. If you want, um, Start solving this question at option A by yourself. You may stop the video now. I'll wait for a few seconds. Okay. So um, I'll do it the second. I'll do the same thing with option B. Don't worry. So we we need to find the friction force. But how can we? The friction forces formula is is as given as here. The friction force at least aesthetic, uh, is always less than or equal to so mu s, the coefficient of friction, static friction, actually, times the normal um, force. So, um, looking at this thing, we have mu s as 0 0.7 times 9.8. I took it, I took the um, gravitational acceleration as 9.8 because that's how we take it in this um, universe physics book times um, the normal force is equal to the, you know, uh, the weight of these two objects combined. So 50 plus 80 times 9.8, as you can guess. So that makes the, um, the friction force's limit, the static friction force's limit, is 891.8 newtons. So, um, but, you know, it's not equal to that, not always, because if there's um, a lesser force than this, it has to be equal to that, that force. Otherwise, it, it, um, if it were the same, if it were um, 891.8, it wouldn't, uh, you know, the net force wouldn't be zero. So, uh, let's check that. So, um, is it 891, blah, 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 or less than that? So, um, this, I'm assuming that our bucket of concrete is motionless, is at rest. So, um, then what do we have? We, we need to, you know, um, have a net force equal to zero because its acceleration is zero, because it is at rest. So, um, we have downward force, which is 65 times 9.8, right? So, the upward force has to be equal to that. So, and the upward force, as you can see, is T, tension. As it goes So, tension. Looking at here, we have tension, we have uh, friction force on the other, on the opposite direction. So, let's see that if our tension is uh, greater than or equal to friction force. So we have tension as 65 times 9.8, which is equal to 637 newtons, which is less than the limit of our friction, static friction force. So uh, our static friction force has to be equal to this value because we have tension equal to this and we have friction force. Let me just show it. Yeah. Static friction force. And those have those two have to cancel it out each other. Then we have um, the friction force between roof and the box equal to 637. Now, uh, for, but what about uh, the gravel and the box? So as we know from now on that the box is not moving, it's stationary. So does the gravel though. Uh, so if gravel is not moving, its acceleration is also zero. Its mass 
it doesn't matter because zero times anything could be equal to zero. So we see that um, the for only force that is, that can act on gravel is the friction force between the gravel and the box. And since it is stationary, it has no acceleration, this has to be equal to zero. So now we find that the um, friction force between the static friction force actually between the gravel and the box equal to zero. I'm stating again because this whole setup is stationary. So for option B, um, in option B, okay, uh, in option B, imagine that a worker has just grabbed this fixed kilograms of club kilograms of gravel and took it out of the equation of the system. So we, have, we are left with an 80 kilogram box and a bucket of concrete. So, um, and as just to you know, uh, confirm things, you can do that. Now, the free, is the tension bigger than the static friction force? It does. I mean, I, I'm leaving it for you as an exercise to see that. So the system becomes, uh, I mean, act, becomes motion, motion, uh, I don't know, it, it starts moving, what I'm trying to say, okay? So um, it has to start, uh, move in this direction, as you know, and when it, it has covered two meters in this direction, we need to find buckets speed or velocity. So um, there are two ways of, for this option. Uh, by the way, if you want to, you know, do this option right now by yourself, you may stop the video now. I'll wait for a few seconds. Okay. So there are two ways of to this option. First is first is. Uh, energy conversation and the second is uh, by Newton's laws. Okay, the Newton's laws is um, much more easier and uh, shorter. But I have to in the question we need to first find the energy energy conversation. Then you have to check that your answers with the Newton's laws. So energy conversation, as you know, per usual, is equal to this. Why I did I, um, work here? Because we have an uh, external force on our system, that is friction. So we need to include this, okay? So looking at this, looking at our system, let's just say this is ground, okay? This is not right in one. So this is ground. This is y, and from ground to here, it's h. This distance is h. Writing the initial kinetic energy, we have zero. Why? Because at, um, momentarily, when the gravel is taken out of the system, everything is still station stationary. Okay, but we have um, what? What do we have? We have potential energy. So kinetic energy is equal to zero initially, and initially potential energy is equal to this, as you can guess. Okay. So um, uh, I'm not sure if you can see this clearly, so I'm just going to say this in words. Uh, mass of concrete times the actually uh, bucket of concrete times um, gravitational acceleration times y plus mass of box times g times h. Okay. Uh, then we need to find what do we need to find? Yeah, let's just um, continue with the final uh, kinetic energy. We have one house times mass concrete, mass of concrete times v concrete plus one house mass of box times v box squared, right? So, um, for this one, we need to simplify things, right? And we don't know uh, individually the 
Bob's and the concrete um, velocities. But what we know is that these are bounded with a uh, string. That that string and that string is not cannot stretch. Okay, so uh, thus they have to e be equal to. They have to um, move at the same speed. Why am I saying that? Imagine this. I mean, you go um, two meters by to the downwards. And this also spring is going down two meters, two meters, two meters. From here, the uh, movement becomes horizontal rather than vertical. So this also moves two meters to the right. Okay. Then, uh, but the t, the um, time that they are covering these distances, are also the same. So they have to eat as have the same velocity or the same speed because velocity we can't actually apply here. And uh, say that they are equal because one is moving actually in the y direction or the vertical axis and the other is moving in the x axis or the horizontal axis. So, then uh, by writing or making them equal to v, both of the uh, speeds being equal to v, we can write kinetic, final kinetic energy equals to 1 half times v squared times the sum of the masses, okay? The unit, um, the final potential energy then becomes this. Now, why? Because uh, our, our box of concrete has just um, covered this distance. It is a minus two meters in the vertical axis. So I just, you know, um, subtract two from one. That's why uh, we have y minus two here. Plus the um, box has remained has uh, kept its actually what height, yeah. So it doesn't change. And then we write this very long equation. So uh, as you can see from here, m box times g times h, we have this um, factor and this factor. So we can can cancel these out, okay? Let me just right, do this. And so what are we left with? Zero here. This, by the way, uh, I just put work as a minus to here, okay? So we have uh, mass of concrete times g times y at the left hand side and we have the final kinetic energy and the final um, potential energy minus the work, total work on the right hand side but you should be aware that what we have here is this mass of concrete times g times y minus 2 times mass of concrete times g right? I mean, uh, if, you can, if you just write it down um, open it, expand it, so on. You, you, you can get that. You can get that. And from there, we can, do, we can also actually do this. Because these terms have the same uh, uh, components in it. But this one has minus 2 times mass of concrete times g also. So I just, you know, um, take it to that side, the left hand side then we have 2, because this minus 2 becomes plus 2 there. And this g is 9.8, as you can see, and the mass of concrete is 65, okay? Equals 1 half, um, I'm, right, I'm just following this one, v squared, right, times, um, in parentheses, the summation of the masses we have, minus the total work, the total work. Now, what is the total work? Uh, the external force we have in this system is the friction. No, now, uh, just go okay. here. So, then, uh, if, since our box is moving in the right hand, to the positive x direction, let's just say, 
and define this direction as positive x direction. Okay? So in the positive x direction, and our fs, or actually it's fk right now, because it's moving f um, kinetic friction force. So and it is uh, since our kinetic friction force is in the opposite direction to our direction of movement, we have a we get a minus sign in calculating the um, work done on the system. The work done is actually simple because you know work is f times x, and here our x is minus. I mean, no, our x is uh, in the positive x direction, 2 meters, because, yeah, 2 meters to the right, and f is at, on, in the negative direction, and what is our f? It's still the same formula, but since it is kinetic, it is not less than or equal to this, um, or some, actually, some value, but it is equal to it. Value because it is moving. So, what do we have is let me just write it here F kinetic is equal to our kinetic constant. Let's just write this is in the form times n, which is equal to kinetic constant, kinetic um, friction coefficient actually, is 0.4. times, what is n? n is 80 times 9.8 because we don't have the gravel on top anymore, okay? And you see, this is is this is, so this is kinetic friction force Minus two, we have a minus sign, and a minus sign here because I just you know um, <coughs> took this <coughs> verb to here. Okay, it comes with a minus sign. So we calculating this, you have to achieve uh, a speed of two point nine nine meters per second. <coughs> Now, um, in option B, you actually also have to check your value, check your check your result with um, by applying Newton's laws to this system and <coughs> solving it again. And what I mean, you have to get the same result. And the Newton's laws uh, way is much simpler and much easier to do. You, I'm leaving it to you as an exercise, but. And I clearly do not have any more space on the spot. That's one of the main reasons. But what you should do is simply this. So, um, you have to <coughs> consider these objects um, individually. You have a bucket of concrete that is um, that has, you know, on the minus y direction, it has its um, weight, and on the plus y direction it has t. Then you just write the Newton's second law of f equals m times a. Then you get an a, and then you write it <coughs> for this to, for this object box. Then <coughs> you also get an a. Then you just um, those a's have to be equal have to be equal in magnitude, right? So you just have to um, write one to the one side of the equation and write the other to the other side of the other hand other side of the equation. So then you have two equations, two sides of an equation with only unknown t. Then you find t. Then um, you actually do what do since you know a e. A is equal to blah 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 t, then and you know t, then you can uh, attain the value of a. By uh, I mean after that you have to use one of the kinematic equation formulas that is the um, 
v, v final square is equal to V initial square time uh, plus 2 um, A delta X. Your delta X is equal to 2, your A is equal your you know your A, um, you know your V <coughs> initial velocity, which is equal to 0, then you have the final velocity, which is equal to, which is almost equal to, approximately actually, not almost, 2.99. Then, I mean, you should have the same result with those two. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to leave a comment. And please ask your uh, professors or friends and discuss this question. Because this is not a bad question.